First of all, we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to come and talk with you today. And some of the things we want to discover is kind of how did you get to Moorhead and how did you start playing baseball and some of your mentors and, uh, and what you can remember. If you're like me, I can't remember a lot. But. Well, I was, I was raised in Clinton, North Carolina, Clinton, as they say there, and, uh, and played, played for Clinton, uh, played on the baseball team and had an opportunity to scholarship at Duke and Carolina, but Branch Ricky came to Moorhead City. Branch was the president of Brooklyn back then and Brooklyn Dodgers and he had called and came to Clinton and and offered me and my family five hundred dollars to sign a contract with him and back in nineteen forty that was a considerable amount of money. And uh I did and and uh, played in in their farm league. They sent me down to Valdosta, Georgia. And uh, one of the two things I remember about Valdosta, I recently back down there was going to reminisce. I mean, there's a big hospital right over the old ballpark now. But uh, I was pitching against Brooklyn one day, and Ducky Medley was playing with them, and uh, I could throw the ball right hard and. And I knocked him down a couple of times. He came running out there and said, you rookie, mm -hmm. said, you hit me and I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I remember I said, yes, Mr. Medrick. <laughs> he went on back and uh, I walked in. But uh, anyway, I played some minor league baseball for, for in the Brooklyn organization. And then the war came along and I got married. And after the war, uh, I went back to, went to Carolina and, and uh, was going to be a dentist and couldn't get in dental school at the time. I started taking some education courses and phys physical ed courses and ended up being a teacher and, and went back to my hometown in Clinton and coached there four years. And uh, Pat Crawford, who founded Camp Moorhead, uh, came to Durham. My wife was teaching music at the school, I guess, in Durham and had to people who, more people could afford to come to Camp Moore than anywhere else. And he wanted a representative in Durham and, uh, and hired my wife to represent him. And that was 1948. I came down here that summer as a staff member and uh, as assistant director. And uh, that's where we got started. And, and I coached in Clinton and uh, Worked here in the summers, and I went full time with him in, in '54, and we eventually bought the camp in '59. But where I got connected with it was Solar, Solar Path Baseball locally down here. Uh, uh, I was always talking. We used to go over to Solar Path, and Irvin Smith had a store right there on the on the water, and we got to talking baseball. And he found out I'd played some, and. Uh, he came over, he and Ty Frost, who really managed the team, uh, came over and uh, asked me if I'd be interested in coming and playing with them, and even offered me some small amount of money. <laughs> Looking back on it small, I said, I'm not interested in money. I, I'd, I'd love to come play with you, and I played with them uh, two or three years and had a wonderful time over there, playing on that sand dune over in Solar Path. And, uh, but it was a great experience. Got to know a lot of great people here in Solar Path and uh, down east and and Moorhead, uh, some I hadn't met before. But uh, that's kind of a background of how I got started in it. Could I, I'd like to ask you a question. When you when you first started, uh, you, the president of Brooklyn Dodgers, his name again was? Branch Ricky. Branch Ricky. Yeah. yeah. When you first went with them, were you? Would they sign you as a pitcher? Yeah, I was a pitcher. Yeah, I'm a pitcher. How long did you stay with them? Well, I, I actually played there with two summers, uh, and uh, played in Valdosta and Troy, Alabama, and uh, then the war came along because I had to go in service, and in the meantime, I got married too, and uh, uh, baseball got to be a secondary thing then. And, uh, what what year did you go in the service? Forty early forty three and. I, I need to pause for a second. <clears throat> the uh, is that your washing machine that's over there? Yeah. 
Yeah, you need to cut it off? Yeah, can I cut it off? Yeah, cut okay, it off. Okay, and I'll cut it back on when we're done. All right, well, does that interfere with you? Yeah, now, I can Are you hear recording it. that, too? I can hear it gurgling in the background, so you I've never heard it. <laughs> you got better ears than That's me, too. <laughs> yeah. 1944, I'm in the service. You got married before you went in the service? Yeah, I got married on Friday and went in Monday morning and stayed gone about two years and... Uh, Well, I married a Warsaw girl. Okay, sorry for the interruption. <laughs> that must be a sensitive thing, because I, I hadn't heard a thing. Yeah, I think we left off. I mean, you were you were playing two years as pitcher in in Valdosta and Troy, yeah. Alabama, and then of course uh, you mentioned that you got married before you went into service in 1944. 43. 43. Yeah. How long did you stay in the service? Uh, until the war was over in the uh, fall, October or so, in 45, I think it was over. What What did you do in the service? I was in the CBs and served in all, all the time I was in there, I was in the Solomon Islands, or all the time I was overseas. and. And I came in from work one day. I was with demolition. We were building airstrips, and I was operating a jackhammer. And uh, came in one day and saw some boys standing in line. Asked them what to do, and said we want to try to get in the Naval Air Corps. And I got in line with them. And uh, both my brothers flew B-17s. And I reckon because of, they thought maybe I might make a good pilot, I was accepted into the Naval Air Corps. And and just printed, finished pre-flight school when the war was over, and I had enough points to get out, so I, I got <laughs> and went back to school, went to Carolina. I mean, my understanding is the CBs were pretty themed at that time. They were called the themed CBs. Well, it was, you know, it was a work work outfit. Uh, uh, built built everything over there, mainly in my outfit. Built airstrips, and uh, we went in right after Marines and. Built right on the beach, but it was a, it was a great experience. Uh, but one I didn't particularly like it now. You mentioned earlier that you were born in uh, Clinton. No, I was I was born in Scotland County. Scotland County. In Wagram, <laughs> a little town between Rayford and Laurenburg. But uh, uh, we moved to Clinton when I was ten years old, so I went, went to school there and. Uh, I said I went back there and coached later on. Uh, I want you mentioned getting to coming to Moorhead around 1948. Uh, 48. Can you identify this picture here? It looks like an old picture from 1950. Is that your? Yeah, that was our staff during our boy session. I think I told you we had one session for boys and girls, but and had women staff members. This was just a during the boy session, and Pat Crawford, who founded Camp Morehead, uh, that's me sitting on his right there. And some other, there were quite a few other fine athletes in this picture too. I don't remember all of them. I know Glenn Bass, who played for the Buffalo Bills and was on an all-star with them. Uh, William Fairclaw's in there, and his brother Wilbert, both of them played for Wake Forest. And, but that, uh, some of these boys still come by to see me. Tommy Corver, who was a local boy who taught school here for years, is in that picture. But, uh, most all the staff members are coaches and college boys. You also you also mentioned that you uh, they signed when they signed you out of high school. Yeah. Um, did you pitch in high school? Yeah, I was pitching. In there. And you pitched in Clinton. Yeah. Clinton, Clinton High School. Yeah. Uh, how, how did you get into baseball? Did any of your family members? Well, I had an old brother who played. Of course, everybody played baseball back then. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't unusual for, for everybody in town to come out for the team, you know. And, uh, we, uh, and I found out I could throw the ball pretty hard. And I say I was offered scholarships in two or three different places, but I, I reckon because of I were mainly needing the money back then. Everybody was poor since in 1940. 
who we were. How, did, who was your strongest mentor, I guess, growing up? I mean, who helped you refine your skills? Well, there was uh, several boys in, in Clinton who played baseball, and as a coach, Wood was his name. Cliff Wood he came down there from Pennsylvania. Uh, he was a wonderful person and a great coach, I guess. He probably had more to do with it than anybody. Yeah. And did you were you were you able to play in college after you uh, went to college? No, that you was you're already that pro. You couldn't uh, couldn't play after you were pro. I think that rule has changed now that you still can't play the sports you were pro in, but you can play other sports. Mm -hmm. I could have played basketball too, probably at that time. Well, Walter Rabb, uh, Walter coached the Carolina ba baseball team for after Bun Hearn left up there, Walter was a coach, and uh, he and I got to be great friends, and I played on a couple of all-star teams he had in the summer, and uh, Walt came down to Clinton and hunted with me all the time. But I was up in Chapel Hill a while back and called him. He's still living. Walter was about probably close to 90 years old now. One of the one of the questions I wanted to ask you was, I mean, you played minor league, and that, I, I don't I don't know what class was that like class. It was class D back class then. Class D. Yeah. Um, when you shifted into playing with the Saltwater League or the Cardiff County League, that it changed to. Uh, what was the difference? Did, did, did you well, they, they probably could have beat some of the teams I played on. I, I, they wouldn't wouldn't have, if you played them a lot. They wouldn't have beat them any time, but they would have probably because we had. Two or three good pitchers in in the county, and uh, was that what determines most of the time whether you're going to win or not? Uh, I think in the Saltwater League that you you played in uh, fifty a little bit in fifty five and fifty six and fifty seven. Yeah. I mean, you had it looked like you had some pretty strong pitching. Now, did you did you pitch? Yeah, I pitched on Basalt Path pitch, too. Uh, got rocked a few times, and I won some games too. But I I played first base most of the time with them. I, I had noticed uh, one of the things that you you did. You, you seemed uh, the pitching had diminished by that time. It looked like your hitting was. You, they were hiring you for hitting. <laughs> you had. Hitting. Well, I, I could hit the ball pretty good. I, <laughs> great, but uh, uh, a couple of years there, I had pretty good averages. I, I noticed in 1956 that you led the league with batting 512. I mean that. Well, I, I I probably hadn't gone to many as bad as many times as some of those boys had go. I I missed some of the games because of my duties here at camp. But uh, uh, there there were some good hitters and and some of those Atlantic boys down there. Uh, uh, John Hamilton was a, was a good hitter. And there, what was a Willis boy? Who, who yeah, was there a, was, there was uh, John Hamilton had hit. Uh, if you flip that over to fifty seven. John Hampton batted 381. Yeah. He was number eight on the Atlantic team in 57. Yeah. There were four Willis boys ahead of him. <laughs> batting yeah, yeah. Johnny yeah. Willis, Buddy Willis, Don Willis, and um, yeah. there was another Willis boy ahead of him. And Roy Cochran had led that lead in 57. Yeah. Who was the who who were the big guns on the Salter Path team during that era? Oh gosh, I, I don't remember those boys. Of course, Jerry Pittman not only pitched, he played played some other. I think uh, Harold Bass played shortstop was a pretty good hitter too, and uh, uh, I, don't know, I can find a list of those boys. Though. I could probably tell you more about it, but. Uh, As I say, it's been 50 years, and some of them, it's things I don't recall. But, uh, I really don't remember all those boys. So, uh. Of course, uh, Ty Frost, my understanding, and of course, he managed the team. Yeah, uh, he, he, Henry, Henry I think Henry was his brother. He played. Uh, he, Henry was a good hitter. Uh, I'm looking at the list right now. He, uh, Eugene Haskett hit. 451 uh, at that time, and George Lewis, who 
All those boys could stroke the ball pretty good. Lord, I, I, I wasn't hitting but 303 then. 363. <laughs> well, that wasn't a bad year, actually. <laughs> But it, it was a, it was a, it really was a wonderful experience. I got to know that all the Carter County boys at that time, uh, and I was new down here, and, and and it really was a great experience to go to different communities and meet some of those people. What was the competition like? I mean, I've heard stories about playing Atlantic and uh, oh man, it was they were playing Harper's Island in some <laughs> cases. Uh, can you tell me some of those stories? Well, I, I, I remember one game down in Smyrna, some old big old fellow down there had a bat and was going to come conk me with it. And I said, uh, well, I, some of the other boys talked him out of it, I think. <laughs> well, I'd hit, uh, hit, had a pretty good hit and he didn't like it. But, uh, in Atlantic, we, it was a great competition in Atlantic. Most of the time they had the best team. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, Moorhead, we had some good games with them. Our biggest competition was Atlantic, though. Everybody's competition. Yeah, I noticed uh, in the documentation that it appears that Atlantic um, just about dominated the 50s. They won Solid Path, one in 52, it looks yeah. like, and back in 56. And uh, you, yeah. uh, the year that you led the league, Solid yeah. Path won the championship and tournament. It yeah. Did you develop, a, I guess you mentioned the camaraderie between players uh, you're on your own team, but also uh, these other teams Oh, as yeah. Has well. yeah. it lasted yeah. over the years? Yeah, Mac, Pete, go back. Mac passed away this past year. But he was a great friend for a lot of years, and John Hamilton still is. And uh, and uh, I see Jerry Pittman occasionally. And uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of those boys I play with already left us, but uh, left me with a lot of great memories. Do you remember from um, going back to the minor leagues, did any of those guys you were playing with, did they, of course, the war may have prevented some of them, but did any of them go Oh, on? quite a, I remember Hank Behrman played uh, outfield for the, for the Dodgers a lot of years, and uh, there were quite a few of them. Maybe I can keep up with all of them, but uh, Marvin uh, Rackley boy played with the Dodgers. And, uh, I, I never really knew whether I could have could have made it or not. I, you know, you always like to think you could have, but uh, there were things more important at that time. And uh, my wife and my education. So, uh, but uh, I'll never know whether I could have made it or not. But, but at least yeah, having somebody that. thought I could in the beginning, anyway. Is shifting back to this, the the Cardiff County League that you played in in the 50s. Um, all of a sudden, it was going like big guns, and all of a sudden, it just died out after 57. Wonder wonder what happened to the league. You know, it always takes some somebody in any community to spearhead something, and, and I think some of those boys lost interest in it. Uh, and. Uh, Unless you got somebody pushing it, um, nothing's going to go over. And I think that's what happened to baseball. Um, Did you play any in, in the 60s at all uh, in the East Coast League? No, I didn't play any. No. I played for Goldsboro in summer and Coast Plain League. and But that was, must have been 40, 47 or somewhere in, while I was at Carolina. Done one summer, and put all of it in class D ball. How do you think that baseball helped you and other other boys as far as uh, growing up? Oh, it was a wonderful, uh, and you know, learning how to be a part of a team and and learn how to get along with people and. It was a wonderful experience for me, and I'm sure it helped. Of course, I know how baseball was in the community, even in the 50s. But how, how do you, how do you think it helped the community have these leagues pop up? 
Well, a lot of people came to see them, so they must have liked it. And uh, uh, money-wise, financially, I, I, I don't know whether it ever helped a lot, but uh, I think most every, every baseball owner back in those days actually lost money. Very few of them. They owned the team because they love baseball. But uh, that may have been one reason it disappeared, too, because of finances. Yeah, my understanding is sometimes when they would have the Harker's Island games in, the, in those days, they would actually shut businesses down and go see the game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, Irving store closed every time. Did you ever know Irving Smith? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, of course, Ty Frost, was a, he was a real character now. <laughs> Tell me about him. You know, I've heard a lot of him growing up. Yeah, you're right. Mr. Baseball and Solar Well, Bell. he did. He loved baseball and uh, would do anything to keep that team going. And uh, he was a pretty good manager, too. I mean, he called some good shots about taking players out, putting them in, taking them out. And I liked, I liked Ty. He was, but he and Irvin were the first two people from over there I ever met, really. And Irving got kind of got you going with solder panel. Yeah, yeah. And then he brought time in the talk. Yeah, we used to sail over at sometimes 20 children and go in the store and buy a Pepsi, nickel Pepsi. And uh, Irving and I had some, as a matter of fact, I duck hunting with him over there on, you know, right now where Pine Old Shores is, and back before it was developed. But it, it was a great experience for me, and I think it was a wonderful thing for the county, too. Uh, and I, we, we all appreciate you doing this, getting this history together, too. Uh, I think it's going to be a great thing, because I've been on that board down there trying to get that museum built since the first day, and uh, it'll mean a lot to them. We appreciate you doing it. Well, you, you're mighty welcome, and I think because of your efforts, I think I am doing it <laughs> because of that. But it's also because of people like you spoke about, Matt Pickett and the Wilson Davises yeah. and, and uh, Crawford Pickett, uh, those boys who I knew well and uh, in, in some cases uh, you know, they were my mentors and in some cases I ended up playing with yeah. like a Crawford in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, but it's something that the stories were being lost now we at least document who played on what and you know who had their time to shine uh, and try to prove themselves and yeah. learn how to live in the world with a team and, and move yeah. on. So we've enjoyed that. I've asked you a bunch of questions, but do you have any further thoughts on baseball and, or any questions you want to ask? I don't really think, can't think of any of you. It uh, certainly has been a big part of my life. And, uh, uh, when I was younger, and I still read about it every time, every day. I can tell you a lot about the, who's winning and losing in the majors, and uh, still. But uh, back when I was a young boy, it was really my, my sometimes my whole life, and uh, meant a lot to me. Who was your Who's your favorite major league team? Well, of course, recently the Atlanta Braves had. I guess everybody in this part of the country has been. But uh, back back then, I guess Brooklyn and the Yankees uh, they were such big competitors. And uh, but uh, I appreciate you coming. I hope hope I've given you some insight and in the way I feel about it. You have, and we want to thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, it. for letting us do this. Could I ask you a couple of questions before yep. we close up? Yeah, yeah. Could you talk a little bit more about your first impressions of, of going down east, like way down east Atlantic, as it was then? Well, don't get into talking funny, because I thought, like, I thought you talked funny and you're from Raleigh. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know what, uh, I, I had been down here and fished, surf fished over there. Before I ever, before 1948, I'd been down when there wasn't anything from Atlantic Beach to, to Solar Path, nothing from there to the Coast Guard Station. Matter of fact, I surfaced over there in a, in a bought a military jeep for $75 and ran it up and down that beach uh, many a time and uh, even had my wife to pull me some more to get me started and I'd still go surfacing. And, uh, 
but it, it wasn't totally new to me, but it, uh, I've always loved down east. It's been a beautiful place, and I, I appreciate uh, their way of life. I don't necessarily, I, I would not say I don't necessarily agree with what some of them are thinking down there now, but uh, I don't. <laughs> but you can take that out. Yeah, well, either. Uh, <laughs> and then the other thing I wanted to ask you is to talk a little bit more about the how competitive were the different communities, the small communities like Atlantic and uh, Harker's Island? Oh, good Lord. They, it wasn't really hate, but they, <laughs> some, some days you felt like it was when you, when you were beating them. They, they uh, didn't like it. I mean, it, was, it really was a competitive league. Uh, the, the dominant teams probably were were, were Atlantic and Salt Lake. Moore had had a good team so, uh, several years, but uh, it, it was it was great competition. Uh, uh, anything else? I, I can't think of anything else. Yeah, so you. this, we talked about a lot of years back, and. Uh, but it was a great, great experience for me. I appreciate y'all coming.